begins its journey at its source, usually located high up in the mountains. Erosion is the dominant force here because the gradient of the river is steep and has a lot of energy. Lateral and vertical erosion of the sides and the bed of a river are caused by abrasion. Along with we weathering of rock fragments and precipitation, steep V-shaped valleys are formed. Closer to the source, a river usually follows quite a straight course, but soon they begin to bend and wind around obstructions in their path, forming chains of interlocking spurs. In the upper course of a river, waterfalls may also be found. The gradient of a river becomes less steep, the water flows more slowly, as a river encounters harder rock. The harder rock is generally supported by softer rock, such as sandstone. As the river flows over the softer rock, it begins to rapidly cut downward. The more turbulent waters at the base of the waterfall form a plunge pool, and they continue to undercut the softer rock. Soon the overhang of harder rock is unsupported and breaks away into the plunge pool. Over time, the waterfall retreats upstream, leaving a steep-sided gorge. Soon the valley floor becomes flatter, meaning lateral erosion is more significant than vertical erosion. As the valley floor evens out, meanders appear. They form wider loops as the floodplain broadens out. The river is fast flowing on the outside bend. This means this section of the river is able to carry more material and erodes the river bank, forming river cliffs. The river flows more slowly on the inside bend. Material is deposited, forming a point bar. With continued erosion of the neck of a meander, the river will break through. When this occurs, the river will resume a straight course and deep erosion will eventually block off the old meander. As the river reaches the sea, it will flow into an estuary or delta. An estuary is where the land is at sea level and the river will use its energy to broaden the river channel. Estuaries are the widest part of a river and continue to get wider as they near the sea. The volume and velocity of water is at its highest here and so the river carries large amounts of silt, which is deposited as fine sand and mud, forming large salt marshes on either side of the river. A delta forms when the speed of a river is greatly decreased near to the sea. Therefore, the river will deposit the majority of its silt. If the rate of deposition is greater than the rate at which the sea moves the sediment, a delta will develop. After passing through an estuary or delta, a river will empty into the sea.